And it now. All right, thank you. Four minutes after nine o'clock. Nice looking Monday morning. It's kind of an exciting week. The Fourth of July is on Friday, right? We're looking yeah. forward to that. We we have right now um, two tickets that we're giving away to the Coke Zero Four Hundred, also happening Saturday, Saturday evening. Sounds like a good. Uh, you know, if I was going to that race, I'd want it to be in the evening, right? <laughs> yeah, I'd want it to be in the evening. I know quite a few people here at the station have gone. I think Tom is showing up uh, this Saturday. I think uh, so. Tom Schmitz from the Voice of Ocala. He'll be there. I think he's calling in as well. You know, WOCA has had a long relationship with the Daytona International Speedway and the races over there, and they've been kind enough to uh, allow us to have some tickets so that we can give them away for our listeners. Joey Chitwood the third is on the phone. He's the president of the Daytona International Speedway. Let's say good morning to Joey. Good morning, Joey. Hey, how's it going? I'm excited. It's race week. Uh, we plan our year around all these kinds of activities in Daytona, so... Hopefully we'll put on a good show this Saturday night. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Now, the, the timing of it, it's 7.30, right? That's right. It's uh, under the lights, which we like that. I think I agree with you. Racing in Florida, it's better at nighttime, especially during the summer. So uh, the cars look a little faster, a little cooler temperatures for the fans. But uh, hopefully we'll put a good show on under the lights uh, and uh, put on a, a – at the end of the day, you know, it's July 4th weekend. you got to be under the lights, right? We'll do some fireworks <laughs> in the sky. We'll have some fun. Uh, it's part of the show. Yeah, right. I was say you have fireworks on Saturday night, too? We will. We're actually going to have a great deal on, on Saturday night when you think about it. Friday night, though, we're going to do some other pre-race activities. But Saturday night, we've got a big pre-race concert with Lee Bryce. We're going to have a huge fireworks show. And then we're also going to honor four Congressional Medal of Honor recipients in pre-race. You think about all that's special this weekend, celebrating our nation's birthday. We want to pay tribute to some individuals who uh, have kind of paid the price for the freedoms that we enjoy. So I can't think of anything more American than NASCAR horsepower on the high banks of Daytona. Oh, I love that. I love the fact that you're doing that. Now, for, starting with Friday, that's that's when the weekend really begins. That's the Firecracker 250? Subway, it's called the Subway. That sub is. Sorry. That's our, yeah, our Subway <laughs> Firecracker 250, which is, uh, you know, the name from the past. It used to be called the Firecracker Race. And uh, it's some great young talent in the Nationwide Series. And uh, those guys will go out there and put on a show for our fans. And, you know, when you think about the weekend for us, with a Friday night race and a Saturday night race, some great camping, a great infield activity, a lot of people watching that goes on. But both races are under the light. Hopefully it uh, keeps the temperature a little bit cooler, get these afternoon showers out of the way, and we can go uh, put on some great show. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I think, any, and so who makes that decision? Is that the NASCAR, or do you make it? Who makes the decision at what time it starts? You know, it's really us, NASCAR, and TV, um, but basically our summer races have been under the lights now for a long time just because of the, the heat. We used to, back in the day, run the race at 11 a.m., uh, and actually all the, the fans would go to the beach by 3 o'clock when the race was over, but even at 11 a.m., it's still a little humid out, so uh, we like running under the lights, but really TV, us, and NASCAR all have a say in it, and it's all about making sure the fan enjoys the, uh, the event. And the fans can also come on Thursday to watch the different events that are happening then. Yeah, it's a three-day weekend, so Thursday is really practice and qualifying. And so it's a chance to maybe uh, walk around the property when it's not as crowded, uh, maybe even a better chance to bring uh, some smaller uh, kids to experience it for the first time. But uh, it's a lot different this weekend than Speed Weeks. You know, Speed Weeks in February, we're going for two and a half weeks nonstop every day. This event is three days. You've got to fit it all in, jam all the activity together. And the NASCAR crew, they're coming in from Kentucky. They'll be leaving here to go to another race. So they're in and out real quick for this uh, summer, mid, uh, this Midsummer Classic. So is there a time that's the best time uh, to get an autograph if you have your favorite race car driver? Or what, what's your advice? Is, it, is your advice to stay away from all of that? Or, or is there a way to get a, an assigned piece of memorabilia? You know, there's, there's some great opportunities. You've got to pay attention. A lot of the drivers will actually do autograph sessions at their merchandise haulers out in the Midway. So that's a good opportunity to, to double check. And then you got to be in and around the media center in the fan zone. As drivers come and go to do their media obligations, press conferences, things like that, there's always a good chance maybe to grab one or two for an autograph. So you got to kind of be light on your feet and ready to move real quick to catch them because uh, they're walking fast usually. But usually around the media center or near their merchandise hall, they'll post a sign 
uh, and tell people when they're going to be there to sign some autographs. Oh, wow. You, you were kind enough to allow us to have some tickets to give away. And uh, at this time, if you're listening and you call the business line, 732-8000, there's nobody here to answer that line. But it will roll over to an answering device. And as long as we're talking to Joey Chitwood, you are welcome to call 732-8000. Tell us you would like the two tickets. And we will pick one name. Only one person is going to get the two <laughs> tickets. And th that person is going to be very happy. Every year we do this. This is one of the most exciting ticket giveaways we have so right now we're kind of opening up the opportunity um, just go ahead and call right now anytime we, while you hear us talking to Joey uh, 732-8000 and it'll roll over to the answering machine and go ahead and and uh, leave your name your phone number and just say I want to be in on this Coke Zero 400 thing mm -hmm. so uh, do you, do you have, what's the camping what are the camping rules for camping in the the mid what do you call it, the midway well we actually have a bunch of different camping opportunities we've got just general tent camping that's inside turns three and four, but we also have spots for motor coaches, and we have lakeside, we've got some paved spots, uh, spots with hookups, and also for the folks that maybe want a little more calm camping, we can camp you outside the property, outside turns one and two. Usually, if you're going to camp in the infield, uh, you're looking to maybe enjoy yourself and do some people watching and uh, maybe have a couple late evenings. It's where all the action is, all the atmosphere. I think we'll fill up that infield. It will be full. And everybody's just having a great time and uh, just kind of walking around. People will set up tiki bars. They'll set up plastic pools. Wow. Uh, nice. It's almost like a show on who can create the most extreme setup with your motor coach and your pool and your bar. Wow. wow. Do uh, people bring their pets when they camp? They do bring their pets, uh, though we have very strict rules on that in terms of making sure their leash should stay in your area. We want to make sure that all of our fans enjoy it and uh, can't have pets just running around. But I will tell you this. If you walk around the infield on Saturday night after the race, I guarantee you won't even have to bring your cooler because so many people are friendly. They'll, they'll you know, invite you in, have a cocktail, you know, <laughs> get it all out, meet some new friends. Uh, it is a, it's a great experience and really something unique in terms of a sporting event. Do you ever do it yourself? I mean, do you ever walk around and say, hey, thank you, I'll take, take one of those cold drinks? Uh, well, unfortunately, I'm on the clock. I do walk around and check in with the customers, but I have to wait uh, wait until uh, we get the last person on the bus and head them home before I could really indulge myself. But, you know, you think about it, we worry about how you get to the property, how you leave the property, and everything in between. So, unfortunately, I'm on the clock. Uh, I might have to wait till uh, Sunday evening after we've gotten everybody out of there and, and the event went well, in which I... Uh, I take uh, take care of myself a little bit. Tell me a little bit about the guided garage tours. So as part of the fan zone experience, we actually have a sign-up sheet, which you can come in and sign up to take an actual guided garage tour. Wow. The garage is where all the haulers are, all the cars, where the crews are working on the equipment. So you'll actually be able to walk through that garage area. So imagine you're really walking through the locker room, basically, a behind-the-scenes tour to see everything that's happening, whether it's tech inspection, could be drivers walking around, Teams working on cars. It's really a cool element and part of the fan zone experience. Now, if you have fans on pass, you got to get there early to sign up. That's one of our more popular opportunities. The the race itself starts at seven Saturday, but the events actually start earlier in the day, and that includes some performances. Right? You have some uh, musical performers. We do. We've got a Lee Bryce sixty minute pre race concert that's going to start at five thirty. So that'll go from five thirty to six thirty. We'll then have a huge driver introduction set up. That will occur between then and the start of the race. So some really great activities. The Fan Zone Pass actually allows you on the ball field, that's the area where we'll have the concert. It's the grass area between pit lane and the racetrack. And that's also where driver intros occur. So imagine you're standing on the football field before they play the Super Bowl. That's, in essence, what this pass does. We let you down in the middle of everything before we actually get the race going. Do you discourage people from bringing their own fireworks? <laughs> yeah, we we ask our fans not to do that. We let you bring in a cooler of your own food and drink, and we are more than happy with that. But obviously, we want to make sure that this is a, a safe experience for everybody. And sometimes we find when people bring in their own fireworks, they they don't think uh, how they're supposed to with them. Instead of firing up in the sky, they might fire them at other people. Yeah. So we oh, not that's not good. Your own fireworks. Not uh, good. Uh, especially with so many folks around and so many campers. Uh, we'll give you a great fireworks show. Believe me, you won't have to bring any on your own. Are, are the tickets uh, for sale online? Uh, what are the, has anything changed? Has technology changed the way you sell tickets? We do. We sell, we sell tickets online, and so DaytonaInternationalSpeedway.com. We still sell them over the phone as well, 1-800-PITCH-SHOP. We find it's about half and half in terms of people wanting to talk to a customer service rep or actually go online and order the tickets. We've got all sorts of packages. 
kids 12 and under, we have a $10 ticket for Saturday night, and kids 12 and under are free in the fan zone. So we have some really great packages out there to make sure that uh, people can bring their families and have a great time. Uh, you've got a uh, brand new track laid out. Uh, do you, are, are you still selling pieces of the old track? <laughs> You know, we sold a bunch of pieces of the old track, a lot more than we ever thought we would. Uh, they're still out there, although I don't think it's the same. Right now, with the new construction going on, fans want to know how they can actually buy their old seat that they sit in. So that's probably the next unique collectible that we'll sell here shortly. But uh, it's amazing the passion that NASCAR fans have for Daytona. And Daytona means so much to the history of our sport. They all want some type of collectible, some type of memorable item they can take home with them. Oh wow! Um, so, so what is what is um, your job like? Are, are you constantly? I mean, it's a gigantic area that you have to maintain. Is, uh, obviously, the track is the most important part of what you have to maintain. Yeah, I think the challenge for me is ultimately when it gets to my desk, it means it's a problem that the staff couldn't solve on their own. So I usually get pulled into the tricky tricky situations, trying to come up with solutions to things. But you got to think about it. You know, we'll turn on the property and we go twenty four seven because we camp people overnight. And so you're dealing with a host of issues, whether it's guest services, security, you name it. It's very intense. And so we kind of have to suck it up for about three or four days and really get after it and then uh, hopefully send everybody home. But usually if I'm dealing with something, it means it's going through a couple layers of staff to finally get to me. Wow. Does the Daytona International Speedway uh, um, seat more people than any other arena in America? I mean, how big? I mean, it's gigantic, right? How, how many people actually f- sit there? We actually have 146,000 seats. Wow. That does not count anybody that we put in the infield. And so it is a huge sports property. It's the largest sports property in the state of Florida. And we can fit inside our racetrack every other professional Florida sports facility. So the Dolphins, the Bucks, the Jaguars, the Magic, the Heat, the Panthers, the Lightning, the Devil Rays, we can all fit their stadiums inside a racetrack. And then... We have to throw in a couple other stadiums, Gators, the Seminoles, uh, UCF, the Citrus Bowl, just to even fill up the empty space that's still around. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is amazing <laughs> when, when you think of it that way. So, so God, you guys have a huge maintenance crew. I mean, there must be a, a thousand guys that are cleaning that place up. Well, we actually employ a lot of temporary help during events, but we've got about 100 staff full-time, and about half of those are maintenance. You know, it's a property that's over 50 years old. So we do have to chase it, uh, a lot of Band-Aids here and there, uh, but we're doing a great job. Uh, we, we make sure that when fans show up that they have a great experience because we want them to really enjoy the property, and uh, we make sure we've got all the spit and polish out and make sure it looks pretty good. Can people meet the sports commentators because they have a, a fan base also? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, if there's one thing about everybody involved in NASCAR, whether it's media, sponsors, drivers there's such a great following i mean their fans they have so many different ways that can <clears throat> follow our sport um and, and that's the best part of it and you know with 43 race car drivers out there there's always a difference of opinions about who's running well uh, i think our sport probably produces more content than any out there uh again the races uh, i guess the, all the events really start uh, this is our thursday right the events start thursday but the first race is friday the subway firecracker 250 and then, of course, the Coke 0400. And remember, you can still call right now, 732-8000. And if somebody answers, since Patsy's here now, somebody might answer. But go ahead and get your name in this thing. I don't know when we're picking the winner. It's got to be tomorrow or Wednesday, yeah, maybe, maybe Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we want to make sure you have enough time to plan for this if, if your name is picked. Do you have a person that says, gentlemen, start your engines like you do at the Daytona 500? We do. We'll have a grand marshal. Um, we're actually going to have a member of the military to give that command. And so uh, we really want to do a good job paying our respects to the military this weekend. It's such a special time to celebrate our nation's birth. So we try to embed military into almost all of the pre-race functions. Uh, I think our fans really enjoy that. I know the drivers actually enjoy that. It's this one weekend where it really makes the most sense at an NASCAR race. You know, from a radio perspective, when I listen to the, the radio broadcast at, at the races over there, I am I am impressed. Be, it's it's so choreographed. It's so um, precision. It's amazing. They have they have announcers all over the track, and, and you don't. If if radio is the way you listen to the race, you don't miss a beat. I mean, yeah. you, you, it's amazing. In fact, if I was sitting there, I would be tuned into a radio broadcast of of the race. We have a lot of our fans who actually tell me that when they're at home and they're watching it on TV. 
they'll turn down the volume on the TV and put the radio broadcast so the radio matches up with the actual race. We've got some individuals who've been doing it with us for 20, 30 years, and they can paint such a great picture with their words, and it's so exciting to listen to them. You know, that's the one thing about it. Racing is exciting. You're driving a car 200 miles per hour. There's 43 cars out there bumping and banging. There's some great personalities. It's a really exciting sport, and it is uniquely American when you think about it. You know, the, the rumble of the engines, the horsepower when we go green, these mammoth properties. Uh, there's really no other sport in our country that is as audiovisual as we are here in NASCAR. Do you ever do any of the uh, commentary? Do you jump into the box sometimes and do that? I do not. Unfortunately, my job at that point is making sure everything's going smoothly. So uh, I, I keep my eye from a distance on the media guys, making sure they've got electricity, the microphones work, stuff like that. Uh, but I let them do their job because at that point, I don't really pay attention to the race. I'm worried about all the other elements. <laughs> yeah, you're, Sponsors, you're, you're, fans, <laughs> getting people in the gates. Let's see. Put this in perspective. If you have 140,000-plus people there, that would make Daytona International Speedway the what largest city in the state? That's got to, you've got to be one of the biggest cities in the state at that point. We are. Just the ability to get our workers on site, parked, credentialed, and at their gates and at their location is a challenge because we need to get a couple thousand people in a place to work before we let fans on property. So uh, for us, it's, it's a city, uh, and we flip the switch. When we have to operate this venue 24-7, uh, the scheduling, the staffing, it can be a challenge. Wow, and you become the mayor of that city. Is there yeah. is there a police force in your city? <laughs> we, well, we, we most definitely have police. Once in a while, our fans tend to... Um, uh, we Once in a while, we have some over-beverage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so we've got to make sure that we, we... We want everybody to have a good time, but we've got to make sure we've got uh, some police and security here just to make sure everybody plays by the rules. Can I put you on the spot a little bit and ask you if you have a, mo a most memorable moment? Of all the years you've been um, there? Oh, goodness. There's so many great things that have happened. Uh, seeing Dale Jr. win the Daytona 500 is pretty special when yeah. you think about his family lineage and everything. And handing him the trophy in Victory Lane uh, and how appreciative he was and, and uh, the conversation that we shared in Victory Lane, I, I think that was a pretty special moment. Did you personally hand him the trophy? I do. I personally hand the Daytona 500 trophy to the winner. So, uh, and I warn them, it's about 55 pounds, so it's not that light, so they have to be ready to lift over their head. And uh, that's my kind of final warning as I hand them the trophy. None of those guys will cave because they have all those beautiful women around them, so they don't want to drop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I do is I warn the team who stands behind them, hey, don't let him drop this. This thing is heavy. It's slicked down with Gatorade because they've been throwing Gatorade around, so... Uh, the team's on on notice to make sure that nothing happens to that trophy. Uh, you you must have your eye on the uh, weather right now on that storm system that's out there in the Atlantic. Do you have a lot of emergency personnel there in case they're needed? We do. Uh, we have a direct pipeline to the National Weather Service, so we make sure we're well prepared and we actually have their system up on site uh, when we run the events and make sure that we're prepared to communicate to all of our customers about what's happening. So if you're going, make sure you show up early. There are a lot of things. One thing you didn't mention, uh, Joey, real quick. Where did I see this? There was a, is there a Navy band playing earlier in the day? There is. We've got a Navy band playing. I, again, if we can embed military into anything that we do, we'll take that opportunity, whether it's the anthem, the command to start engines, having a Navy band on property. Uh, we, want, we want fans to leave here knowing that we did a good job paying our respect to the military. And the best way to do that is have them truly be part of the event in all forms and all in all fashions. It is one of America's favorite uh, events. One of yeah. America's favorite sports, in fact, and uh, and and Daytona. The, all eyes are on Daytona when you have one of these races. That's for sure. Um, it's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful race facility, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a, it's just an honor that you've you guys have been uh, teaming up with us. I don't know how many years we've been doing this. It's a very long time, yeah. though. Yeah, more than twelve. Uh, well, Joey, thank you for taking time out of your day. Let me ask you about your family lineage. Uh, you're Joey Chitwood III. Were you, was, are your parents, your grandfather, were they involved in racing? My grandfather raced in the Indy 500 back in the 40s. He finished fifth three times and then also wow. created an automobile stunts show. So I've had racing in my blood since I was a little person. So I, uh, I definitely feel like I'm in the right place uh, and I've got some great experience uh, to bring to the table. Oh, wow. And w did you have aspirations to drive yourself? I was actually a stuntman. 
So I used to do crazy things like drive cars on two wheels and wreck them and do things like that. So I had a chance to be a performer, but uh, I need the management side right now for a much safer place to be. Wow. Uh, okay, so the, the information you need if you want to buy tickets are the website, which is... Uh, Daytona International Speedway dot com, and then what's or can give us a Daytona yeah. International Speedway dot com, and then the phone number is one eight hundred Pit Shop, and so we've got all sorts of packages, great stuff for fans to enjoy uh, the Troop Zero event this Saturday night. Yeah, I, I would advise that you look over the packages because you might find a, a really good deal, especially if you have children. Oh, yeah. Especially if you, you're going to have a good time. If you have a camper, remember you can go camping in the Midway area. And fishing. And fishing. And fishing pole, yeah. Can you imagine that? Where'd you, where'd you go fishing? <laughs> Do you guys stock that lake, by the way, or is it just natural? It's natural, um, but they actually dug that uh, lake out to provide the banking for the track in 1958, so that's been with us since the uh, first race in 1959. Wow. Uh, well, you you have fun this weekend. Uh, um, thank you for being part of this radio station for so many years, and thank you for being on the air with us this morning, Joey. All right, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good interview. All right, we'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. and I'm here to tell you a few things about ABC Frederick's Appliance. They sell not only new, but used guaranteed appliances. When you call ABC Frederick's Appliance, they will provide service on what they sell and any appliances that you own. ABC Fred